my soapbox and you can't shut me up. You know, so I don't know, you know, it never, it just depends, you know. Well, Kathy, this is actually, this Good Rejects is starting recording and oh, Kathy, you're right someday now. you're going to, no, no, but I'm going to do like a one-on-one -on -one with you at some point because oh. Kathy, you're really sharp. She's in Orange County Mensa and she's the head of Intertel. She's got a lot of stuff to talk well, about. Tell, tell us something. Tell us a words of wisdom for like 30 words seconds. Words of wisdom? 30 Comedy seconds. Comedy is life. Comedy that, is life. That, comedy is life. If you cannot laugh at it, you can't stay here. You just can't stay here. Like you're talking, I, I love what you said about about not uh, the suicide not being on the table for you because of of uh, either not knowing what's out there and you, what no matter how bad it is here, we know you know we've got and we got something. To, I, I, I want to see what's next. Well, I want to see what's next. I, I have the opposite. I think there's nothing after. Like, and it oh, well, scares yeah. the crap out of me. And I'm like, almost anything except like agonizing pain, like someone yanking your teeth out, is better than nothing. And you can always do it later. Like, suicide can always be procrastinated until it's too late, and then it's a non issue anyway. Yeah. Uh, Mario. Uh, Andrew, sorry. Oh, no. It's okay. All right. And then Mario's going to join our podcast, me and Jacqueline. <laughs> So this is um, episode 26 of Theater School Rejects, and um, today my guest hosts are Mario. And where can people find you? Um, yeah, just on my Instagram, Mario.Hirose, or on Twitter. So. Okay, and Jacqueline, where can people find you? Um, on Instagram and Twitter, it's Jacqueline Pissarro. All right. Reaching out to my fives of listeners, <laughs> which is like probably more than this podcast deserves. But we just did another show, along with um, Andrew Mercado, who's joining in on our podcast, oh, apparently. Well, I, I was just hanging with him, and I didn't, yeah. But where, if you want me on, that's cool. That's where can awesome. people, well, for a minute, where can people find you? Where can people find me? Well, I got an Instagram that maybe I should shorten the name of because it's way too long. But it's Andrew Mercado, my name Andrew Mercado, then numbers. So Andrew Mercado, then numbers. That's my Instagram. Like, like then numbers? Yeah, like, like there's the actual word, numbers. the word then numbers. That's actually really great. Thank you. I really like that. <laughs> All right. Well, you can hang out. But we got to do for like, the next six minutes. We got to need to just sort of not not be talking. <laughs> That's me being an asshole, people. That's what you came here for. But um, well, no. I mean, like, I don't know. I've, I've never had two guests before at the same time, so this is all brand new. Um, anyway, my podcasts are pretty informal, but we just did a show. It was really great, and someone came up to me, someone I know, who said Jacqueline's the best. <laughs> Clearly, wanted me to know that I was not. <laughs> That was a very thinly veiled insult, but it was a compliment for Jacqueline. <laughs> who says like, "Hey, you're the best." Where do, do I rank in this? But Am he I like didn't laugh at anything, or? so he doesn't think anyone's the best. I I heard Dave trying to get him to smile, and apparently that didn't work out too well. Yeah, he didn't laugh at anything. He's that guy. Um, you didn't get mentioned, dude. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm I'm just gonna say a solid number five then. We can come up with the rankings <laughs> later. I'll do a poll <laughs> among the comments. Who did you think was best? <laughs> you can't vote for yourself, but you can arrange sweet deals. I'll vote for you if you vote for me. All right. <laughs> I've actually thought about doing a comedy contest like they do, like just like putting, putting a show together and being like 50 bucks is the best comic, whether rated by the audience or not. Like the Flappers does a comedy contest. Oh yeah, they do. I've won fries there before. I'm I got buffalo wings. <laughs> I, got, I got third place at the Claremont Same comedy here. contest. Same here. I got third place. We well, don't even advance. Yeah. I, and yeah. I got the prize. I, I, I've won mine, so. Uh, Very the, cool. I, I know my performance wasn't endemic to that, but uh, tonight. But no, I, you know what? I always said that like I, I'm I'm all for judges. Like just to, instead of having like the bringer type. Like, yeah, because the audience is a problem with the audience doing it. Um, I think that it's it's kind of weird to like judge comedy because it's really subjective like I understand that there are certain jokes that like can hit wider audiences but like what I might find really funny you might not really find really funny and they both could be really famous comedians who sold out a reason arenas well but just like came up like thing. there's a joke you say that I love the whole um if I Princess Sleeping Beauty taught me that if I, if I lay there and do nothing else, my prince will still come. And like, no one laughed this time. It usually like takes a second. And I'm like, what the hell is wrong with you people? That's a great <laughs> joke. And I yelled it out. I, I assume know. you heard it. I, I didn't realize it was you yelling that out. 
And I'm really shocked that bomb because that joke usually gets everyone after a couple of seconds yeah. of them thinking about it. And I waited and no one left. And I'm like, fuck you, crowd. <laughs> that is a good joke. But I mean, like, I'm tying that into not so much kissing your ass, but like that, that that's a joke that I think is really hilarious. But today, but it didn't today, reach the audience. But today, they didn't really think that. And it wasn't delivery. It was just, that's just the audience. But again, like, different audiences like, are going to like your stuff differently. Yeah. And different people. But like, the thing is what Mario says about if you have five of your friends come out you're going to win a comedy contest you know yeah. if everyone else brings like right. two or three people um, although I think Flappers has a nice way of doing it where you have to rank a second and third and that does go against that because you can kind of if you get enough thirds you can win but um, well I mean I'm, I'm open to ideas like we'll talk about it but like I think that might make comics might want to come out and again bring people which is you know, having an audience. Like, today wasn't bad. We had about, No, because you know, of the space. You don't... In small spaces like that, you don't have to worry about having a big audience, you know? Like, you want to have a bigger audience in, like, a theater or... I think somewhere where you can actually earn a profit. Like, at least at a theater, like, you can have some ticket sales and people are like, oh, I'm going to a theater. I'm expecting to pay something, you know? And you can sell drinks and stuff. Yeah, like, I, well... I'm a, you know, I'm a lawyer. I'm like, everyone here knows I'm a lawyer. Um, that, like, legal responsibility. Like, if I sell Cokes and someone says, like, they got sick, you know, I'm like, I don't, what am I going to do? For $2 a Coke, I can make an extra 30 bucks, and I'm opening myself to a lawsuit? That's, how my, that's my thought process. I don't huh. think you'd get sued, but, I mean, I still say try it. I don't think that, like... Well, I mean, you can, but I'm just saying, like, you, you know, no one's going to say you got sick at a, at a show, but, like, if you drink something that goes bad, you know. Again, I'm, I'm way over paranoid, but I'm just like. Yeah, you for, are super paranoid. But for $30, is it worth it? I wouldn't think of that. Well, I, I mean, wouldn't think that. No, and, and, and like, I'm the comic that brought a six pack with me so I can, you know, go perform. Like, I definitely think you're going to sell alcohol as part of the show. So, or even, Yeah, you can. Yeah. And you do it as donations. Yeah. So you well, say for a donation, and then that's how. Well, I like that, that Tisha did it. Like, mm-hmm. that was fine. I liked having the beer here. I just don't want to be the one selling it. I'd rather right. venue sell it. Mm-hmm. Um, and oh, then you don't have to have alcohol. You can have water or something, you know, something to sell. No, but I think I, I can talk, because I can split the, the revenue from any sodas with, with, with tea, and then I'm not on the hook for anything, because... I like it. Oh, yeah. I think about it. Yeah, sorry. We're all like talking like strategy, but but you produce shows, and I'm trying to get Mario to produce shows, and eventually Andrew's gonna produce shows. Yeah, uh, I do, and it it can be very like hard. It's hard to get people to come out to see comedy. Um, that's the entire reason why I don't post any content on YouTube right now, because I don't want to enable my friends to be like, oh, I'll just watch the video. Well, I, I know think it's, though, it's a balance like, of self promotion and all that stuff too. But it's yeah, you have to have stuff on YouTube, though. You could put it on private, just, like, if bookers don't know you. Like, if I don't know a booker, sometimes I will send a video. Or, like, for oh, festivals and no, stuff and like that's, that. No, my mind's on private just for that very oh, reason. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, but, like, I asked... I, I, that's the first thing I ask when people, like, want to be on a show. I'm like, send me a YouTube. And if they don't have a YouTube link, like, that's immediately, like, why don't you? How are you a comic and don't have a YouTube channel? Um, but, like... I do agree with Mario. It's like you have that. Like I feel like I have to constantly make something new and not really hone what I've done because people are coming to see the show and I can't do the show they've already seen. Like I do some things, you know, and that's like why I took topics from the audience because that sort of inherently takes it someplace I wasn't planning to go. Yeah, but like the more you say those jokes that work, the better that they get. I mean, it's like I used to be like that where I would constantly be obsessed with saying new things. And like my friend was like, you need to focus on really delivering the good material that you have and like master that because like in LA, like the most I do is like 10 minutes. So like I like do material that I know that works in the beginning and then like try and switch it up to try and get new things. Um, and then like th- like that type. Thing. I'm right there. It's like I kind of do like th- like three or four minutes of old stuff, or like if a ten minute set, like five minutes old, and then maybe experiment with like three minutes in the middle of new stuff, and then try and close with two minutes of old stuff. That's like my today. Today I'm being very different, but also like, well, I don't know about when you produce your own shows. How long do you give yourself? 
usually around 10 minutes. So I guess I should give myself more if I'm producing. I always give myself 15. Always and 15. then I've done a couple of shows where I give myself 20. And I did one with 25 just to see what 25 felt like. Yeah, and, you're right. Well, I mean, the but, most I've ever done is 20 minutes. And it wasn't, it was at a rehab, so it wasn't 100% 20 minutes material. There was crowd work in there too because they get sick of listening to your jokes after a while. You have to talk to them. At a rehab? Yeah. I want to do stuff like that. I definitely got to talk more because like, you do a lot of really cool stuff that I would like to like piggy back on but like you know not mooch so like we'll figure out yeah. some way to make it you know worth worthwhile for you but you do a lot of cool stuff are you cold a little i'm sorry I tried to, this is my recording studio the parking lot but me and richard <laughs> older we we like walk around burbank we just like this and we like we came across like a domestic violence sort of incident oh wow well i, I talked about it we just asked if everything was okay and if, and if she needed help and she didn't say she needed help and we eventually you know moved on but like she was like wrestling with this dude and we're like, is everything okay? And he's like, he's got my phone. And she's like, he's got my hat. Or she's got my hat. And like and like we I kinda of posted like, what should we have done? Should we have made sure the phone got back? Should we call the police? Or just if you ask, are you, you know, do you need help and they don't say anything or they don't ask for help, I kinda of like my feeling is what well, I, mean, I kinda of went into this and maybe that's exactly my perspective, but like <coughs> when I see something, my view is I don't wanna ignore it, but I don't know what to do. So what I've done the last like twice has happened and I just ask is everything okay here? If you're gonna give us a chance for someone to say, no, I need help, or please call the police, or anything they might do. You could have bettered your MMA record just with that one incident. <laughs> that would have been two wins right there. Unless he beat me up. Yeah. But luckily I had Richard there as backup, but still, <laughs> you know, who knows what, <laughs> but people get shot. Like, people can get shot ask, interfering, that kind of thing, and then there's a chance, like, if you do put your hands on the guy, the girl might attack you. But sorry, Jack, I was asking your perspective, you're obviously, you're a woman, you know, if you were in a situation, what would you want a guy to do? Oh, I would, like, if I was being attacked, I would... Well, not necessarily attacked, but you're in some kind of argument with your boyfriend or a guy I, you know. And, like, if I felt like I was in danger, I would want them to call the police. But, like, if, you, if some guy, like, if you're walking by, like, what would you, would you want them to, like, ask if you're okay? Oh, you want them to yeah. Just call the police? Like, yeah, obviously I you're being would. hit. You're being hit. I'm not by, like, yeah. you're just kind of arguing, all right? You're just kind of arguing. Yeah, I think so, for sure. Well, this was kind of, like, more, like round table discussion than like <laughs> a podcast we're kind of missing the funny here but um uh so what, what, what's your promotion like Jacqueline what do you got next what's, what's your next show um my next show uh God, I know I'm doing one a charity show May 26th um I don't I haven't memorized them all but I don't know that's the one that comes to mind is I am doing a, like a really cool charity show May 26th oh I'm doing a sunset um, Wednesday, next Wednesday, April 20th. Sunset? The, what is State show? Social House. State Social House, which is on Sunset Boulevard. And Mario, what do you got going on? Uh, next weekend, back to back to back show. So Saturday starts with Adele's in San Clemente. Uh, Sunday, I'll be at Flatbush Claremont. And then on Monday, I'll be at the Secret Comedy Club in Hollywood. So, uh, what is the Secret Club in Hollywood? Can you, can you tell? Or is this like Fight Club? It's You have to follow them on Instagram, and then after that, they give you a password, and then they give you discounted tickets. So it's a... Um, yeah, it's a pretty neat show. So, oh, that uh, is cool. I've sit- heard of that. Is it at the comedy store? No, it's uh, it's off of Sunset at this like restaurant theater place. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, so San Clemente Saturday, Claremont Sunday, and Monday in Hollywood. All right, um, and uh, anything funny happened to you in the last couple of days? Just, we're almost done with the podcast, so just kind of anything you want to talk about that was funny in the last couple of days? Or your favorite moment for the show? Anything you remember from the show tonight? Like, I remember Dave, the guy with the flute, trying desperately to get the older guy to crack a smile and failing yeah. miserably. Some people, <laughs> and some I also people remember don't want to laugh. Dave. You're getting better. <laughs> some people don't want to laugh, but um, some people, like, um, I did this college, and this girl in the audience said something really interesting. Some joke... I don't remember whose it was, but their joke didn't hit. And this one girl said, I thought that that was funny, but I only would have laughed. It was like a dark room and nobody would have known that it was me. (laughs) So some people are afraid to laugh at certain things when it didn't like hit most of the people. They don't want to be the only person laughing. They're scared of how other people will perceive them. I could see that. You know, my favorite moment of the week was seeing that comic, I forgot his name tonight, 
take down that heart in the background. Dave, oh, yeah, same guy. That was yeah, good. because I'm like, normally that would have been me. So to see that happen to someone else, I'm like, okay, thank God that wasn't me. Tonight. I was not the clutch tonight. You're yeah. like, hey, that was not me. Um, well, that's about it for today's podcast. So thanks you guys for coming out and being part of this. this. I load up on YouTube and you can link to it. <laughs> like I said, we got about, I think about 25 views. So I say my fives of listeners because we don't quite have tens. Um, do you guys want a podcast? Jacqueline, do you have a podcast? I did, but I stopped like doing it. Um, I, I mostly do it because like it makes things less weird. Do I'm, you like, put it up on SoundCloud? No, just YouTube. Oh. I had a SoundCloud, but with everyone having unlimited data, I myself only really listen to things on YouTube now. Like even if it's, you know, if it's I, like video blogs, usually about sword fighting, but they're just a guy standing at the camera and talking, and you get just as much out of it just listening to it. So oh, I'm see, like, I was putting it. Up. I put it on SoundCloud, and I feel like um, it's easy to get stuff on like Google Play, but they say that it's difficult, more difficult to get it on iTunes because you have to be consistent. So that's why I didn't even try. I, I, I did SoundCloud. We were doing it once a week, but it was like costing twenty bucks, and oh. no one was really listening to it on SoundCloud. It was all like, and I, I just decided to go with YouTube. It's just so much easier to access. Anyway, we went past this. Um, <laughs> so um, again. Just real quick, how do people can find you? Uh, Instagram or Twitter. Um, just look at me up. Mario. I'm like the only Mario <laughs> Hirose in the world. So it's H-I-R-O-S-E. All right. And my Instagram and Twitter is just my name. It's Jacqueline Pissarro. It's always J-A-C-L-Y-N and then P-A-S-S-A-R-O. Great. And you can find me at the website, Um, which you probably know because you're listening to this. But anyway, <laughs> thanks. Bye.